So, um, Theo Vaughn had Gabor Mate on his show, and uh, this moment has gone pretty viral here. I originally saw it on the website Mediaite. Uh, they're going to have a conversation here about shame and children, and the topic of the children in Gaza comes up, and you get a, a very uh, striking moment of Theo Vaughn uh, sort of crying. You know, tears are flowing as he talks about the Palestinian children and what they're going through at the moment. Let's watch. But here's the thing. Children are, are narcissists, uh, young children. When I say narcissists, I don't mean in a pathological sense. I mean in the sense they think it's all about them. Right, and they don't have any other choice. They're all they know. That's all they know. So if the parents are happy and connected and there's an atmosphere of um, loving acceptance and so on, then the child thinks, hey, I, I must be pretty good. I must be yeah, okay. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, but if the parents are stressed, depressed, traumatized, racially challenged, economically challenged, um, or such terrible things as the children in Gaza are experiencing right now with the daily bombings and all this kind of stuff. What can they think? That, oh. that there's something wrong with me. Oh, imagine some kid over there in Gaza looking up and there's a bomb, some, and yeah. they think, man, I'm so horrible, I deserve to be bombed. Well, you know what? There was a study done of guys and children. Man, that's crazy, I hadn't thought about that. Like really, look, imagine that though. There was a study done of children in Palestine um, 21 years ago. And 95% of those, 95%, this is long before the current horrors, mm -hmm. long before October the 7th, mm -hmm. long before the aftermath of October the 7th. 95% mm -hmm. of, of those kids showed traumatic symptoms. High percentage with their beds, like you and I did. Mm -hmm. They expressed aggression towards their parents. Um, they had uh, panic attacks, anxiety, yeah. fears. Can you imagine what's going to happen to that generation? Years from now? Years from now. I mean, it Thank just breaks my heart every day when I think about it. And, uh, and, and, and I know I know a lot of my fellow Jews don't agree with me, but as a Jewish person, I'm not the only one who feels that way. It especially breaks my heart. Yeah. You know? well, when you put it in that sense, that a kid, imagine a kid like, you know, you, yeah, because what are they going to think? They don't know. They just think, no. man, something's so wrong with me. I deserve to be killed. Yeah. They said, what's going to happen to those kids in the future? I'll tell you what's going to happen to those kids in the future. Hamas 2.0. That's what's going to happen. What's going to happen in the future? Um, Suicide bombings of uh, Israeli cafes. That's what's going to happen. Because when you kill somebody's entire family and their extended family, when you put people through that degree of trauma and hell on earth, I mean, literally daily. There was a fact that came out a while ago that daily in Gaza, kids would need to get arms or legs amputated with no anesthesia. And those are the lucky ones. Because the 99 Western doctors said, I, I never in my life, and I've been in a million conflict zones, never in my life have I held a kid's brain in my hands and it happened regularly in Gaza. Kids were getting shot directly through the heart and directly through the head, right? What happens when you inflict this on an entire generation? What happens? The ones who survive and maintain their will to go on will be filled with thoughts of revenge and retribution. And this is what, you know, people on the left have been warning about this from the beginning, that this idea of total collective punishment of every Palestinian because of the actions of some Hamas members, that um, this perpetuates the cycle of violence and the idea that this, oh, this is going to help keep Israel safe. No, it's not. It's going to do the exact opposite exact opposite never mind turn israel into a rogue state in the eyes of the world because they see with their own two eyes a genocide and an ethnic cleansing and you have theo tearing up think, you know imagining imagine what a kid in gaza is going through imagine what a kid in gaza is it's it's literally unfathomable unfathomable you know i'm sitting here in my comfy studio recording my youtube show like my existence compared to that of a gazan child it's like we're living on two separate planets. And we just arm it and fund it and casually sit there with all the death and the carnage and the brutality and the savagery. And our government makes excuses for Israel as they do it and keeps sending the money and weapons. It really is. And I was naive, but I never in my life thought we would see something as black and white, as cut and dry as we're currently watching. Usually the world is a super complex, super nuanced place. 
It is not complex. It is not nuanced to say, hey, stop murdering children. It's not nuanced, not complicated, not difficult, very straightforward. And they're doing it and they know they're doing it and they're happy that they're doing it. It depends if the adults are able to hold them and, 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 and keep them feeling loved. But 19,000 kids have been orphaned. And when I say orphaned, I don't mean just that their parents have died. Their extended families have been wiped out. Yeah. What's going to be the future of those kids? You know, and uh, anyway, it's, it's just a terrible. No, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it feels yeah. like a genocide is going on over there and you don't know what to do, you know, from it's like, you know, I mean, you can pray, you can speak up about it. And I know that it, there's like a more political aspects of it. And we've had different people come on to talk about Israel and Palestine on here. Yeah. And, and it was very knowledgeable for a yeah. lot of our listeners because you hear about it a lot, but you don't know the history and everything. But well, I've been there. I went there two and a half years ago to work with the Palestinian women tortured in Israeli jails. Wow. And they had post-traumatic stress disorder. I've seen it with my own eyes. And um, who's the black American writer, Tenahasi Coates? Tenahasi Coates? Coates? Yeah, he just written a new book. And he talks about visiting Palestine. Mm. And he says, yeah, Tenahasi Coates, yeah. He, in his new book, he says, once you go there and see it, you can't unsee it, mm. you know? And- um, The and, Armenian and doesn't I'm cover it super way. fairly. Yeah. I feel yeah. like our media doesn't cover it super fairly. That'd be interesting to speak with him then. Thank you for bringing his name up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I He's, mean, it's heartbreaking anytime something's happening to a child, you know? That should be yeah, the one thing that yeah. we can all figure out this shouldn't happen. No. It's also the truth that it's also happening to kids in Israel. There's bombs and rockets and so on. I don't know if this is the time to go into the politics of it. It's not a question of valuing or, or, or sort of esteeming one suffering over another. We don't compare traumas. But the degree and the scale of suffering in Gaza is unprecedented, you know, yeah. and look. It seems like it. My, when my wife walks into a room, mm -hmm. I'm 80, I'm typing away, I'm reading a book. She walks into the room and I don't hear her, all of a sudden I hear her, I go like this. The, now this is the startler response of an infant. If you, if you take a three month old who's sitting there, he's lying there and you go like this, it's called the startler reflex. That's built into me. Because when I was three months of age and throughout my first year, Budapest was being bombed by the Allies. Wow. Quite apart from the anti-Semitism and the genocide, there was the war going on. So I'd be thrown into a laundry basket and they'd rush me down to the basement. So when I hear a noise, I still go like this. Yeah. Jesus. So, yeah. Uh, credit to Theo Vaughn for having on Gabor Monte and humanizing Palestinians. Look, you got a lot of these podcasts these days that, um, you know, they're at least trying to uphold the idea of like, bro, we hear all sides out. We'll talk about anything. No holds barred. Because in the past, a lot of podcasts made that point, but then they just have on down the line right wingers, right? Um, and there are some, I do think Lex Friedman tries to hear out all sides, but the problem is he was totally unprepared for that uh, interview with Trump. Just humiliating. Um, but now we learned, even though Rogan in the past had said he didn't want to bring on Trump, he didn't want to help him, you know, even if it's by accident, now Trump is going on. Um, Joe Rogan show. There's some speculation. Kamala is too, but I'm very, very skeptical of that. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess we'll see, but this is an example of like, bro, we're open all perspectives where there actually is a positive outcome, you know, where you're actually humanizing Palestinian children and focusing on probably the most important thing happening in the world right now. Right. And, uh, it just says a lot how rare that is, humanizing uh, Palestinian kids in this moment. And uh, that's why he teared up. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.